Yeah, so my name is Paul Veratitek and I'm a partner at Pantera Capital, one of three partners. And Pantera Capital is a large institutional investor in blockchain and cryptocurrencies. That's all we look at. We've been doing this for five years. So Dan actually founded the firm. He used to be at Tiger Management, one of the world's largest hedge funds. And Pantera is a multi-strategy fund. So we have uh, four different strategies. We have uh, a Bitcoin fund, which is almost like a private ETF for Bitcoin. We also have a venture capital fund, and I manage the venture capital fund, and that invests into equity. So we will invest into startup companies all around the world. You know, 33% of our investments are outside of the US, and actually, one of our equity investments is in Corbett, which is one of the largest exchanges in Korea, Tony, Tony Liu. And uh, again, that means that we don't mind investing into startup companies in Korea. So, um, you know, with our venture capital fund, you know, that's uh, seed in Series A. And then we also have an ICO fund. So that invests into just pre-sales. Uh, I'd say Gifto was pretty recent. Yeah, so Gifto, we, we think, again, uh, virtual gifting, collectibles, uh, digital goods where there's high value. It makes sense to have it be transferred over the blockchain in a trustless way where you can actually, you know, uh, have transparency, manage provenance, etc. You know, kimchi premium, right? <laughs> you know, we wanted to, I haven't been back in, in two years, so wanted to really just you know, support Icon. That's actually one of our investments. That's pretty recent too. And you know, it's, I'd say that we wanted to be here for the summit, support them, and also wanted to see the new developments in Korea. Why the public is so excited about cryptocurrency? What's going on with regulations? And of course, you know, talk to the leading companies out here in crypto, which uh, obviously are exchanges, but then also other other companies and other you know decentralized applications. Yeah, I think, I think on a high level, you're right. I mean, the biggest hurdle for ICOs right now is regulations. So I think first and foremost, we take a look and see what geography, what jurisdiction the ICO is, is or the team is based in. And then from there, you know, we look at, I think the first thing that I could do is I'll probably scan through the use case and you know, see if it actually is interesting in general. And then you look at the token or the use of the token, and, and you see really why is this token going to be used for. And a lot of times, like, you know, you can filter quite a bit already. And then from there, you know, I probably go into team, which is the most important thing. Uh, there's probably two aspects of the team that you look at. One that you can look at right away, and one that you won't find out until after you talk to the company. But basically, you know, does the team have any industry expertise? I think, for instance, with you know, Gifto, you know, Andy, you know, he's been in the, the, the gaming space for a long time. He already has an existing live streaming business that is looking for, or was looking for a way to monetize and he found it through virtual gifts. So this is, you know, an extension of his own business. So that was a no brainer, but things like that where does the team have something special that lends itself to the problem that they're trying to tackle? And then of course, you know, meeting the team in person and seeing if they are, you know, the type of guys that you want to back, not only from sort of track record credibility, but then also, do these guys have the motivation? Are they hungry? Uh, you know, this is different in the fact that you're raising so much capital at such an early stage in going public that you have to be certain that you're backing an entrepreneur that can go through uh, the challenges of an early stage startup, but then also the unknown challenges of an early stage startup with a token. Yeah, so the, the last strategy that I didn't mention uh, is our Quant Fund. And we have a fund that actively trades cryptocurrencies on uh, exchanges, uh, the ones that are on exchanges already. 
and that does so using a bunch of data and quant algorithms and machine learning. So in a down market, that fund loves it because it buys coins on the cheap. So, but in obviously our ICO fund, we're in a lot of positions right now, and I think it's one of those things where we're, we're long-term holders. You know, I think that if there's other funds that are actively trading and don't use data, then they would probably be a little more concerned about price. I think for us, I mean, you know, we, you know, we tell our entrepreneurs to be smart in terms of how they manage their capital, especially when the markets can go down. But for us, I mean, you know, it doesn't really affect us that much. Yeah, you know, I think, I think it really it depends on a case-by-case -case basis. I mean, I think if you're trying to create uh, an open source project, it is much easier to start from scratch in, 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 the fa in terms of the technology and, and sort of um, you know, having that, you know, building that technology base right from the beginning, having things decentralized and having all the components be decentralized. I think it is tougher for an existing company, especially a growth stage company or a public company, to have a completely sort of decentralized application. I think it's going to be, you know, to me, it's. It, I'm not as interested in existing companies unless I think that there is a really strong use of the token uh, and the token mechanics within their platform. Because at the end of the day, there's not going to be companies really probably building on top of their platform because it's a little bit more centralized, right? They already have, you know, existing product. So I, I think if there's a compelling use for the token for an existing company, then, then that's fine. But it, they do have to go through a lot more hurdles. You know, they already have existing investors. They could be public already. And you know, it'd be, it could be tougher for those sort of companies to actually, uh, you know, uh, change their, their roadmap uh, every single time they want to do something versus an early stage company, you know, they're more likely to be able to be nimble. So those are the pros and cons. And, you know, I'll look at both. I would say the bar for an existing company uh, and, and doing a token is much higher. Yeah, no, I'm pretty bullish on the crypto market. I, I think that we're just in the early stages. I think that it's gonna get much bigger. I'm not gonna say that it's always going to be up and to the right and rosy. We're gonna have corrections along the way. Corrections either not in our control because of regulations, government, or even corrections that are within our control where projects just aren't gonna succeed. And we're gonna see tokens that don't actually have any value and the market's going to drop because of that. But nevertheless, I mean, there are no, there's a lot of funding that's happened, but th there are no products yet. So I, I think there's a lot to be, to be waiting for. And, you know, some of the most interesting projects are actually now being thought of, you know, serial entrepreneurs, uh, some of the best uh, technologists in the world are also moving over to, to the blockchain. You know, all the top VC, Sequoia and Jason, they have more knowledge than me and more data than myself in terms of where their talent pool is focusing their time and building companies. And they all say, they're all saying that those top people are all moving to the blockchain right now. So it is very exciting. And I, I, think, I think we have lots and lots of growth to go. I think first, first huge advice and one that I, you know, I, I do myself is don't invest more than what you're willing to lose. That's the biggest advice ever. And even maybe better advice, you should expect to lose it. So that, that helps determine how much you should invest. Just expect it to go to zero, but obviously, as you've seen, you know, has much potential for large returns. So that's number one. I mean, you know, ri risk what you can risk and what you should risk. Number two, I mean, I'd say, and, and, the, and the last point would be just, you know, do, do your research. And, you know, don't always follow the noise. 
you know, I think you should do research, do your homework, come up with a thesis, what, what you think will be successful, what you think has value, and then follow people that have done it before, that have proven to be successful investors, that have been proven to be able to invest well but avoid scams, and learn from those guys and follow those guys and try to track those guys and compare your portfolio to those guys. I think that's probably a good way to get started. You know, there's, there's, two, there's two things that you can do in this ecosystem. You could be a builder or you can be an investor. You know, I've, I've helped build myself. I mean, either, you know, being part of a startup already, doing partnerships to now as an investor for the last seven, eight years and being an advisor to many, many companies, you know, really help, you know, from the sidelines, but really get myself, you know, involved in terms of, you know, strategic advice and going through some of the challenges with them. It's, it's been great. And, and my goal for Pantera is basically to be able to strategically deploy capital into the best projects that I think are going to change the world. And you know, if I can see just even one application that really makes a difference, you know, that's what's going to be you know, tremendous. You know, I want to be able to see these projects from the beginning to when they make a change and a disruption. And, and eventually, I think Pantera is going to be sort of like the Goldman Sachs the black rock of crypto. You know, the way that we've done things is uh, a way that can be very big and very scalable, where every single strategy that we have is in a separate fund. And we think that we can build sort of a, you know, investment product portfolio that can serve the needs of any type of investor. Whether it's, you know, smaller investors, whether it's institutions, whether it's even other funds. You know, we think that anybody that wants exposure to cryptocurrency, through tokens or equity, or maybe even any other sort of funding mechanism that comes out in the future, can get it through Pantera. Yeah, you know, I think it, I think there's a bunch of projects that that I'm involved with and. You know, I'd say, you know, my, my colleague Joey has a pretty interesting project. It's a decentralized prediction market. So I think, you know, being able to make wagers and make predictions on certain outcomes. And this could be anything from, you know, who's going to win the next presidential election to maybe even betting on what the price of Apple is going to be uh, in, in a year or so betting on certain outcomes with you know, public and private stocks to even just sports gambling. But you know, there's a problem there. There's a lot of companies that are in the middle extracting fees for you know, all, uh, all of these, uh, for, for basically doing all of these uh, wagers or, or you know, stock markets, et cetera. So that's one thing. And number two, and, and the reason why they're taking those fees is because they have to actually extract that data and arbitrate, right? So what if you can create a three-sided marketplace where you can actually decentralize the arbitration and decentralize the collection of data and incentivize people with a token to do so and be able to have that token be a representation of not only a way to access this network, but also for reputation too. Um, you know, so I, I think I think that's one of that's a project that tackles so many large industries and makes quite a bit of sense. And yeah, I'm 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 excited to see that one come out. I think I think it's a great time to be in cryptocurrency. You know, I think you know, just like the internet, really made a huge difference in our lives. I think, I think this is just as transformative. And this is an opportunity where the public can actually be involved 
in the building of a new internet by having tokens and being able to participate in these projects, you know, for the first time ever, you know, they can actually uh, be part of, of the company and realize the value from their investment right from the beginning. So, you know, this is, you know, they should go out there, they should invest wisely, but also just have fun. You know, there's a lot of projects that, you know, they can really relate to and appeal to, their backgrounds can, can really make them passionate about. So they should go out there, they should invest wisely and, you know, do whatever they can to, you know, to, to, to be part of the, and, and, and help out these companies. Well, that's it. Awesome.